Hey kids, it's the Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Out and about on another bike review. Very exciting today, because not only is it a new bike to me, but it's a new bike configuration. This is the Honda VFR 800X Crossrunner. It's got a V4 engine, and it's the first time, would you believe, I've ever ridden any kind of V4. So, uh, very excited to see how this rides. Uh, so if you stick around and stay tuned for the next few minutes, I'll tell you what I think of her. So here we are then on the VFR 800X Crossrunner. This is a bike that uh, fits into the sort of sports tourer category if you like, but it's got a dash of, of adventure bike thrown in as well. It's not intended to go off-road or anything like that, but if you look at it, it's got that sort of adventure overtone. Uh, but really it's a sports tourer intended for long distance uh, sporty riding, I guess. And I think it's a really handsome looking machine. It's a bike I've sort of overlooked for some reason. I don't know why, because uh, my initial impressions of just jumping on here is it's a really nice place to be. It's a comfortable bike to ride, nice and upright of course. My feet are tucked up uh, fairly sportily and slightly behind my knees, uh, but it's a comfortable position to be in, wide handlebars. Uh, and, and the impression of lots of space here, lots of space off to the windscreen and uh, really nice looking uh, LCD display. Everything about it I like, it sounds amazing. This V4 engine sounds the absolute bee's knees. And of course this has the Honda VTEC uh, clever valve situation so that when you get to certain RPM, I think it's about 6,000 RPM, uh, additional valves open, you get another uh, sort of second wind of go if you like on the bike. So interested to see how that's gonna feel. Never ridden a, a VTEC bike before. So my very first impressions of the bike is that it's a, it's a nice bit of kit. The other thing uh, I might add that is absolutely positive on this bike is this one's heated with heated grips. And uh, it's quite a cold day today and it's an absolute treat to have warm hands on the bike. Why don't all bikes have heated grips? But particularly important on things like this, Taurus. I mentioned it's the first time I've ridden a V4. And uh, what strikes me about this is, number one, it's very, very smooth, as all four-cylinder bikes are. They always uh, impress me with their smoothness, and this is no different. But this also sounds absolutely lovely. It's got a lovely, deep, throaty rumble to it. It just sounds purposeful. It's the same engine as in the VFR 800. Another bike that I haven't ridden, but would like to. But it really is a peachy unit. Because of the uh, way the engine is located in the frame, Honda have managed to do a great job on mass centralisation and keeping the weight low, so it makes the handling really quite lovely on this. So let's go through a few uh, practical points then before we get to some more open roads. We're still in the sort of built-up area. Uh, mirrors, yep, they work fine, no vibration. Uh, quite big, on quite big stalks. I'm seeing beyond my uh, shoulders. Quite a good uh, situational awareness behind me. See, nice and comfy, nice and big. You can move around on it forward and back. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, I wouldn't say it's too hard. I can imagine you could sit here for a good few hours without too much trouble. Plenty of protection on the front with a big fairing and this screen, which is adjustable, easily adjustable. You squeeze these little bits here on each side. You have to do it when you stopped and you can move it up and down. So that's nice and easy. So it looks like there's uh, bags of weather protection. I'll find out in a minute when we're on a bit faster road. Nice upright riding position, great view ahead. And the suspension is just in uh, what I call the Goldilocks zone. It's not too hard, not too soft, it's just a really nice ride. Now this is a relatively um, simple motorcycle in that it's not absolutely laden with electronics that you don't need. It does of course have ABS and it has traction control, which you can actually switch off if you want. That's what this big button here is, which looks a bit like an afterthought, this traction control button, but you can switch it off. But other than that, it doesn't have any uh, engine modes or anything like that. So just pure and simple V4 loveliness. Even though I've only been riding this bike for like 15 minutes or so, I already feel completely at home on it. It's, it feels very sort of familiar to me, even though I've never ridden one before. Very easy bike to ride. Helped actually by the fact that it's got... Uh, like I say, nice low centre of gravity, so the balance is lovely, and it's got a fairly low seat. It's actually got a seat that you can adjust between two heights. I think it goes between 815 and 835, so if you're short like me at 5 foot 8, it's actually an easy bike to get on with. You can get your feet flat on the deck. Okay, let's give her a quick blast up the motorway, see what she's like as far as wind protection is concerned. 
Okay, on we go then. Lovely. You could just hear the VTEC come in there. I don't know if you could hear it on the microphone. But uh, as I wound her up, just made a bit of an extra bark suddenly. Just felt like it had a bit more go about it. Goes really nicely. Wind protection works a treat. I'm not getting buffed in off this screen. This is on its upper position at the moment. And uh, I'm really sort of sitting here in a bubble of calm. In fact, you could ride with the visor up if you wanted to. Although as it's a cold day, I'll put it down. Right, come off the motorway there. That was just enough to check that uh, the wind protection's good. And the brakes work beautifully as well. As I say, they're ABS and traction control equipped. Bikes here, somebody learning to ride. Welcome to the team. It's always good to see new motorcyclists being added to our masses. Gearbox is nice and smooth on this, nice and snickable. You've got no doubt when you put her in gear. Clutch is fairly stiff, but uh, not a problem, just a matter of getting used to it. do is do is get out of the way of this uh, this truck here's my opportunity lovely beautifully handling motorcycle and it sounds absolutely gorgeous as I say this is a bike that Connor has somewhat slipped under my radar I suppose it fits in the same category as things like the uh, V-Strom and the Versus 1000 up there both bikes that I like very much. The V-Strom of course being a V-Twin and the uh, Versus being a four-cylinder straight four. Both nice in their own way, I like both those bikes, but I think out of all three, I prefer this one. Just because of the character of this engine. It's got the lovely smoothness of the Versus, but it's got the grunt and the sound of the V-Strom. Best of both worlds really. Hopefully you could hear the engine there, it just sounds lovely. And it goes really well. So switch gear is uh, typically Honda, this looks very familiar to me from actually my CRF is quite similar to this. Uh, but it's very positive switch gear, it's not your PCB type, you know, where you're touching on printed circuit board contacts. It is proper switch gear, nice and tactile, you know when you've when you've touched it. The only thing I would say that's a negative about it is they've got the horn and the indicator the opposite way around to what you might expect as you'd have on other bikes and until you get used to it uh, you can end up hitting the horn instead of the indicator and vice versa. Uh, I've got the same situation on my uh, on my CRF but you do get used to it. Right let's just squirt by these. In these corners it feels lovely and planted. It's one of those bikes you kind of set up for the corner and then it just makes its way around it. Nice and stable. Yeah it's got uh, it's got an awful lot of go, it's got uh, no lack of grunt, you don't need any more power than this. We're doing long distance cruises. Very very nice bike. Now you can get loads of accessories for the uh, VFR 800X Crossrunner, including things like uh, proper luggage, uh, aftermarket cans, all that kind of thing. I think what I might uh, look to add, and I don't know if they're even available, but I'm sure there's some aftermarket ones, is some hand guards. So although these uh, heated grips work beautifully well, on these cold weather days, I'm recording this in the middle of December, it's about five degrees, you know, the backs of your hands get the cold, so some uh, hand guards would just work a treat on there, and then you'd be lovely and toasty on here, because. Uh, as I say, there's lots of weather protection off the big fairing on the front. Feels beautiful on these roundabouts. I really like the instrument display on this. It's, uh, it's an LCD display. It's monochrome, even though it's got some little red bits there, but it's basically monochrome. But I like the way they've got the inverse colours, so it's white on black instead of black on white. And it's got absolutely everything you need in here as well. It's got a gear position indicator. Glad to see it's got a proper fuel gauge. It's got uh, your various trip counters. It's got uh, what level you got your heat your grips on, and all sorts of other stuff as well. So uh, yeah, I think it looks really neat. Like that.
nice and easy to read as well. Proper temperature gauge, both the engine and the external temperature. Nothing missing from that as far as I can tell. Okay, so here's the pub that I uh, often pull into to do these walk arounds. It's uh, lunchtime, so it's very busy in there at the moment actually, so I might struggle to find a spot. But let's, uh, let's have a look and see if I can find somewhere sensible to show you around this brute and talk you through the spec. This will do nicely. Okay, it's fine, neutral, nice and easy. And with this, look, we've got these massive sort of bar risers here. It seems like the key is a long way away. Quite uh, <laughs> quite unusual. Right then, Stan's got a nice leg on it, so it's easy to find. And uh, here she is, the Honda VFR 800X Crossrunner. As I say, uh, I think it's a really handsome looking bike, and uh, I'm not sure why I haven't sort of had a go on this before, actually. I like what they've done with it being a sort of a, a sport tourer, but it's got this sort of almost beak like bit here to make it also look a bit adventury but anyway there we go let me get the uh, the phone out and i'll do the walk around and talk you through the spec in the usual way okay so to the spec then let me just open my visor for a bit of air so here we are the uh, the engine on here let's have a little look as i say it's that uh, v4 781 uh, cc as you can see stamped on the sides there's no doubt about that it's, uh, 90 degree V4 VTEC engine puts out uh, 78 kilowatts. I had to look that up. That's 105 brake horsepower at 10,250 rpm. And uh, torque wise, 75 newton meters or in the old money, 55 foot pounds at 8,500 rpm. Uh, brakes on this. Uh, on the front, we've got uh, Tokiko dual discs. You can see the uh, ABS ring as well. They seem to work pretty well. They're 310 millimeter floating discs, four pot calipers and at the rear we've got a 256 millimeter single disc. If I can get around there and show you. Uh, tucked in there uh, and that's uh, that's a two pot uh, caliper with of course ABS as well. Uh, suspension wise the front we've got 43 millimeter telescopic forks with uh, preload adjustment and on the rear we've got uh, what uh, Honda call ProLink 35 step remote controlled hydraulic preload uh, and step plus rebound adjustment so goodness me where is it there we go we can see the spring in there can't actually see the adjuster oh there's the adjuster just there look okay so there is some adjustment on the suspension as well but out of the box as I say feels really nice handling's lovely without uh, without touching it certainly for my weight seat height as I say adjustable from 835 millimeters if you're tall down to 815 millimeters uh, so it should suit a wide range of heights certainly works for me at uh, five foot eight uh, weight wise 242 kilograms wet so it sounds heavy but again because of the way the v4 engine is configured in the frame it actually carries the weight nice and low uh, and it's nicely mass centralized so it doesn't feel anywhere near that heavy when you're actually riding it the tank capacity on this 20.8 litres so given it's a touring bike quite uh, a reasonable sounding capacity uh, in terms of electronics, as I say, it's not one of these bikes that's laden with unnecessary stuff. It's got ABS, it's got uh, traction control, this one's got uh, LED lights front and back, it's got a 12 volt socket, heated grips, and that's, uh, that's pretty much it. It does have uh, self-cancelling indicators as well, um, and of course that LCD instrument panel. And the price, if you want to buy one, 10739 on the road, which I think is... Uh, Pretty, uh, pretty competitive when you compare it against its competitors, things like the V-Strom and the Versus and the Tracer 900 maybe. Uh, in terms of the colours it's available in, you can get it in this colour which is sort of grey and black, or you can get it in uh, candy red as well, and as I say there's all sorts of accessories available for it, including hard luggage, you can get a centre stand as an option, shame that's not included as standard, quick shifter, fog lights, all that sort of stuff so you can make the bike your own. Alrighty, so uh, that's probably all I've got to say about her, uh, let's jump back on. Do some more riding. Oh, I start to get busy in this pub. Let's get out of here while I can. Right, ignition on. It does sound lovely this bike. Yeah, so I've been very impressed with this bike on this uh, first impressions type review. Really nice machine, and uh, be nice to borrow one for a bit longer and uh, probably get to know it. Must as usual just thank uh, Kevin and the guys at HGB Motorcycles in Ryslip for once again letting me borrow the bike and doing this review of the Honda. If you're in northwest London and you want to check out some uh, Hondas, they've got loads packed into their showroom. 
Go and check them out. Tell them I sent you. So to summarise then, very impressed with this bike, the VFR 800X Crossrunner. It's comfortable to ride, it sounds lovely, it goes really well. It's got uh, lots of practical touches like a proper fuel gauge, gear position indicator, nice clear screen, adjustable windscreen, good mirrors, uh, nice high riding position, no unnecessary electronics, it's just a proper sports touring bike as far as I'm concerned. In terms of things I don't like about it, very difficult to find. You have to be really nitpicky these days on bikes to find stuff that you don't like. I suppose things like the traction control switch, just looks a bit of an add-on, minor point, uh, and also the fact that um, Honda have got the horn and the indicators around the wrong way. Again, a minor annoyance that you get used to. But other than that, there's really nothing about the bike that I don't like. I like the styling, I like the gearbox, I love the way the engine sounds and I like the way the VTEC performs. So yeah, really nice bike all round. If you're in the market for uh, one of these uh, sports tourer bikes that are in, you know, the proper reasonable price band, the sort of 10 grand or thereabouts, then this one is well, well worth checking out. I think about of all the bikes I've ridden so far, the which includes the 900 Tracer, the V-Strom, uh, the Versus and the Ducati Supersport, I think this one would probably be the one I would possibly go for. Um, it just... You know, it's not a super exciting bike, but it's very, very practical, and, well, I just like it. But there we go, there we have it. So, give one a go if you're in that sort of market. Okay, that's it for now. Look forward to speaking to you next time. Until then, this has been the Western Flyer. Cheerio.